if people just could appreciate the power in one drop of this incredible, complex, aromatic structure of chemicals from nature, I think that we would really have a much more profound understanding as to their vibrational healing with our own body's ability to, in fact, work very closely with that and raise our own vibration through using those oils. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. A week ago, I received an email from a really lovely woman named Sandra. She was 48 years old and she let me know that her daughters had recently moved out of the house and she had just finished reading my newest book. By chapter two of the essential oils hormone solution, she said it was like I was speaking to her directly. She wanted to let me know that she finally believed that she deserved to take care of herself and that she was committed to a morning self-care routine that belonged to her and that essential oils had been helping her to sleep and get through her day with more clarity and energy, something that she hadn't really experienced in several years. Sandra had finally dialed into what her body needed, some much needed self-love and self-care. Although it looks different for everyone, it very much is the greatest form of self-respect and self-love we can give ourselves. So listen, I know it's hard to do anything when you feel like a zombie. I know because I have been there myself. Naturally, we all want to feel good and show up in a big way in whatever we are doing. So today's conversation with Kim Morrison is all about the essential art of self-love and why it matters so deeply for each of us. I am excited to introduce you to this incredible woman. You know, there is so much more to Kim Morrison that meets the eye. Tenacity is probably the first word that comes to mind. Her journey and all she has accomplished to date has stemmed from her unwavering self-belief and her deep understanding that you must also take care of yourself first and foremost. Now, Kim has been using essential oils for several decades, and we are going to be debunking some myths and concerns around using oils that come up a lot. Now, before we jump into this heart-driven interview, I want to quickly take a moment and celebrate you, particularly your wins. One particular health rock star is Becky Fletcher, and I'm excited to shout out her win that she shared on Facebook a couple days ago. Here is what she had to say. I can't stop devouring all of the episodes. There isn't a woman in my life who doesn't need hormone support. All my life, my mom and my sister struggle with PCOS, PMS, and crazy mood swings. I can't begin to explain how incredible of a resource Dr. Marisa's podcast has been for me and my family. Finally, we feel like we have real solutions to our issues. My sister and I have begun to make changes to our diet and follow the protocols in her book. Well, thank you so much, Becky. You are absolutely the girl after my own heart. See, understanding our bodies and how to create amazing health is what it's all about. And I am so excited that you and your sisters and your mama are jumping on board and feeling like you are really owning your health and wellness. I know how that can feel. Now, if you're listening, Becky, I would love to gift you my favorite superwoman blend. Just reach out to me on Facebook or on Insta at Dr. Marisa. Now, fellow podcast listeners, I absolutely love shouting you out, and I can't tell you how much your message means to me. You can easily reach out to me via Instagram or Facebook or simply reviewing this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you love to plug into. That way, we change the world by giving women solutions at their fingertips and provide them much needed information for women to really take to their doctors or any practitioner that they're seeing. You know, in today's world, as you and I both know, we really have to not only become the CEO of our health, but advocate for what we want when we know something isn't right in our bodies. Now, in terms of advocating for our health, 
Today, we're gonna be talking about advocating for self-love and self-care with Kim. Now, before we get into this interview, I wanna quickly sing her praises. Kim Morrison set a world record as the youngest female to run 100 miles in less than 24 hours in 1989, which has led her to live by the ethos that success is 90% mental and 10% physical. She has used her running story as a direct metaphor for life, riding the highs, hitting the walls, pushing through the pain barriers, and crossing the line and never giving up. Highly regarded as an aromatherapist since 1991, Kim believes that it is through the healing powers of plants, alongside a strong focus of self-care, that can help to ignite your own innate healing, deepest desires, and all-knowing. A five-time best-selling author, business owner, and multitasking mom and wife, Kim loves to share her essential tools for self-care, discipline, and leadership, and most of all, how to use daily rituals that will support you to fall in love with the most extraordinary person in the world, you. Welcome to the Essentially You podcast, Kim Morrison. How are you doing today? I'm great. It's an honor to be here. It is an honor to have you. I'll tell you what, the moment I got to be on your amazing podcast, the moment I got to be connected with all three of your of you and the hosts, I immediately fell in love with your energy. I was like, oh my gosh, Kim, I have to know Kim. I got I got to get to spend more time with Kim. How do I become Kim's best friend? Like that was the immediate reaction I had. And so you have no idea how happy I am to get to have you here today and get to interview you because you are so brilliant with all of your knowledge around essential oils, but not just that, women's health, self-care, all the things that I love and that we are looking for in getting healthy. Thank you so much, sweetheart. And look, honestly, I stalked you for quite some time. So I think the feelings are mutual. Oh, thank you. Well, Kim, honey, we have, I've got, ooh, I've got so many good questions to ask today. But what I want to first do is because I know, you know, my audience is far and wide as well. You are in Australia. I'd love to know a little bit about your journey into aromatherapy. How did this become such a beautiful passion of yours for now several decades? Thank you. Look, I am a Kiwi. I was brought up and raised in New Zealand and at 19 years of age, decided to go on my big OE, my big overseas experience. And I hit the shores of Melbourne. And whilst I was there, I was working in a gymnasium. I was passionate about health and wellness, interested in nutrition and herbal remedies. Didn't really know where it was going to take me. But as I'm sure you'd appreciate, there is no accidents in life. Right next door to the gymnasium I was working in was a natural therapy. College, and I had $180 in my bank account, and there was a 10 week course on essential oils and massage next door for $160. And I just knew that I had to enroll in that. But I took it one step further. The minute I got into that space, I could smell the therapies in the clinic and the oils as I walked in. I just knew this was going to be my life. And I then spent a further $800 on a credit card on essential oils. Now, it was during that time of studying, I became more and more fascinated. But to get up my 200 hours in clinical hours, I wanted to fast track that, particularly around using oils and sports therapy. So I went along to an ultra marathon event and happened to work with a gentleman called Cliff Young, who many Australians would know as a 68-year-old potato farmer who won the inaugural Sydney to Melbourne race, which is 1,015 kilometres. Now, he was a pretty phenomenal man, and I can honestly say, Maritza, he is still one of my greatest mentors, even though he is no longer on this planet. But when he asked me what I thought of being there and using the oils and massaging him, I did actually say to him honestly that I found it incredibly boring to watch 40 athletes run around a 400-meter track for, for 24 hours. So he told me to put my money where my mouth is, and I entered the next 12-hour race. I had never run beyond 10 kilometers in my life, and there I was three months later lined up to run in a 12-hour race. To cut a long story short, I used my oils the whole way through this. I wanted to quit a million times. It hurt. 
And he was right when he said, you will find the real you when you push yourself to extremes. And look, I ended up winning the female section of that race, running 95.4 kilometres. And then they gave me a trophy and said I'd won a place to represent Victoria in the 24-hour championships, which was astounding in itself. And that is where I really used the oils maximally, particularly a number of them, which I put down to helping me set a world record for running 103 miles in less than 24 hours. So that's really where I found the profound use on me personally, but I also ironically had a skin condition through that time. And I had been to dermatologists and I had been to specialists and naturopaths and I had been taking so many different things. And for some reason, my skin just had this hideous breakout. And it wasn't till one day I was sitting there doing a case study on the powers of oils like lavender and frankincense and palmarosa that I thought, why have I not been using the oils on my face in the way that I could be from a therapeutic point of view? So I then used myself as a case study. And within a couple of weeks, my skin started to change just with the gentle compressing method of use and using spritzes and using things like rose water and lavender water. And lo and behold, a year long problem was miraculously healed over a period of six to eight weeks. So I guess you could say I was convinced with their power and their uses, not only in my running and athleticism, but also in my skin and my own personal use. Mm, what an amazing story. I had no idea. This was the first time I'm, I was learning that you had run 100 miles in 24 hours. That just is astounding. You know, my mom just ran her her sixth LA marathon. And that's just, you know, 26.2 miles. And I'm always just so happy when she does this. I'm so proud of her when she does it. And I know that there's ultra marathons out there. I didn't realize that there was a marathon that you could run a hundred miles in 24 hours. So congratulations. Oh my goodness. You know, my mom always has oils with her when she runs as well. So it's no surprise to me that you definitely leverage them really during those, those I'm sure, extreme I want to quit moments when you're running. And then also, like you said, the endurance of all that pain and uncomfortable experience in your body when you're running that much. Are you still running today? Not like this, but just in general? Not like that. No, I love running and I've just had knee surgery, so I'm resting a little bit at the moment. But yeah, I absolutely um, love it. It's just one of those things for me where I get to let go, release my mind. No one can get me when I'm out there walking or running. So it's a really beautiful space for me. Mm, I love that. Well, I want to dive into your aromatherapy experience. Three, almost three decades of, of aromatherapy and you've been an aromatherapist, and I know that you've seen some pretty big changes, probably in the last 10 years in essential oils. Can you talk a little bit about how the industry has changed or what you have seen in your perspective around the use of essential oils? When I was 19, 20, when I was studying in Melbourne, Australia, there was a rise in interest around there. Lady Diana, Princess Diana in the UK had mentioned them and I noticed some spikes occurring. And when I was asked by a leading aromatherapy company down there to be their international presenter, I really didn't want to do that. I, speaking in public was a great fear of mine. However, I had such a strong urge and pull to educate people on the power of oils. And, you know, I would turn up to talks, Maritza, and there was one or two people. I would fly up to places like, you know, Mackay and Queensland, and there would be five people sitting in an audience. These days, I can be presenting to, for, for, you know, up to hundreds, if not a thousand. I think 1,015 was the largest aromatherapy audience. So already in that respect, there has been a change in interest, particularly in the last 10 years where, you know, these beautiful companies have come on board with a multi-level marketing campaign, which I really respect. And I find that what it's done is given women particularly an opportunity to create a business whilst working from home, but also using these amazing scents from nature. So that alone has created a massive conversation, if you like. It's shown the light on our industry and it's given me hope that people are now using the therapeutic uses. You know, when I started my own business, my vision was to become the largest aromatherapy company in the, in the Southern Hemisphere and nobody 
had talked about what the beautiful MLM companies were going to do. Now my vision is to help one woman, one person at a time, realize their own innate healing power to not only heal their families, but to use these gifts from nature, these potent plant extracts. And that, my love, has really helped support us on a massive scale. I know the industry has exploded. I know that we now have shortages in some oils. And now I know the prices are changing with some of the oils because of this beautiful love and interest. I personally believe it doesn't matter what brand you use, so long as you love the company, the ethos, or the people that you're working with and have an appreciation that these bigger companies and smaller companies, if they're proud ethos stands in the valuing and respect for the plants, then my goodness, wouldn't it be beautiful to assume that we could all work together for the greater good of not only the industry, but each other and our own personal health and wellness. So I'm incredibly proud to be in an industry that was so quiet or was almost taken the mickey of, you know, like people would go, oh, you're an aromatherapist. Now I feel like people say, oh, you're an aromatherapist. Oh my gosh, you've been doing this for three years. It's beautiful. Uh, sorry, three decades. Three decades, it's beautiful yeah. To see, <laughs> to see that that interest is there. So I'm sure you'd appreciate that too. I agree that as long as people feel good about their companies and feel good about the philosophy of those oils and how those oils are taken care of. Because again, we, as you and I both know, and a lot of my listeners and your listeners, essential oils are plants. That's where they come from. And we want to make sure that we're taking care of this beautiful planet. And, you know, I love your vision. I think I hold space for that vision as well. That I think that having these gorgeous plant-based elixirs and plant-based therapies to be able to leverage to as our first line of defense. And, you know, I just, you know, I just, you and I are both on the same page with that. I could just go on forever. And I love that this has been your life's work for so long because it has taken, it's, it's step by step, you know, conversation by conversation. You know, we talk about this essential oil revolution and all a revolution is, is word of mouth about something that we believe in. And when you have moms and families who are finding these beautiful solutions that are not creating a lot of side effects are creating a lot of beautiful side benefits. I just feel like it's a win-win for everybody. It's very much been a win-win for us. And what are some of the, speaking of like the benefits of these oils, how have you found them to be beneficial for you and your life or even beneficial for your clients or for the people who buy your oils? What if, what are some of the things that you love to see that essential oils can do for people? As a mum, when my children were very little, they've been embalmed, I mean, conceived, delivered, everything. They have known nothing but a world with essential oils. And when your little three-year-old girl comes home from a party or she's at a party and she's maybe indulged in some sugar that she wasn't necessarily allowed to have at home, but she would come and she would come up to me, a little tailor, and she'd say, Mama, I need some peppermint. Mama, I need some ginger. You know, to have a three-year-old know in Innately, what she needs to support her was probably the first inclination I had into realizing the power we have over our own health and wellness. I also really appreciate the fact that I've had women who have not been able to conceive a child naturally and they've come to me and look, Maritza, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I do believe in the the I guess the esoteric, the, the innate nature, the intelligence of the plants and the body to work together harmoniously. And I've had women turn around and tell me they've even called them their aroma baby because, you know, she ended up having a child and fell pregnant within eight months of me working with her naturally. I've had people heal themselves not necessarily the big conditions like cancer, but I have had profound case studies where people have turned their lives around. I'm not saying it's just the oils that have done that. I think they're a part of that process. I've also had my husband was an international athlete. He played cricket, the sport of cricket, which is a little bit like baseball, I guess, in America. But he played cricket for 10 years for New Zealand. Every day he would use oils and blends to go out there and bowl and represent his country. And I would have international athletes. I've worked with marathoners, Australian ballet, the New Zealand netball team. I've worked with athletes 
and how to use the oils for recovery, for muscle aches, cramps and spasms. And it is so refreshing, so beautiful to see people want to either make up a blend or use a pre-prescribed blend and have that as a part of their health and wellness journey rather than just over-the-counter medications. Alongside things like naturopathy, herbal therapy, chiropractic is massive in my world and I truly love the philosophy around chiropractic care, massage, um, shiatsu, all of these beautiful what, what people call alternative therapies. I would like to consider them the main therapies that we should be looking at and how to weave how people like yourself and myself think and have these as a combination and a beautiful, I guess, artistry and using it as a, as a harmonious approach to wellness where we can inspire ourselves through our own body's healing but also then be the, the role model, the change when other people go, my gosh, you, you had pneumonia last week. Look at you. What are you using? Or someone using a drop of palmarosa or frankincense in their own normal skincare and yet people are saying, you look incredible. What are you using? If people just could appreciate the power in one drop of this incredible, complex, aromatic structure of chemicals from nature, I think that we would really have a much more profound understanding as to their vibrational healing with our own body's ability to, in fact, work very closely with that and raise our own vibration through using those oils. I think the subtlety is what's made me feel so honoured and proud to be a part of this industry because you do not need a lot to get a huge difference. I think that is where I have been most excited to see each person's case or each person's ability to powerfully choose an oil to support their own body to do the work. That, to me, is the miracle. Mm, I love that. There's so much to unpack and un connect in with. One of the things that I thought was so wonderful was talking about just, you know, the power of that oil and what it can do with our own body's intelligence. You know, it's not a conversation that we have enough of is that your body is making intelligent decisions like trillions of intelligent decisions every single second and the power of one drop. Can you talk a little bit about the power of one drop, not just energetically, you know, but what, it, you know, what we break down to when we look at the chemistry of these drops, we know that organically inside of the body, if we look at organic chemistry, that these chemical constituents are having profound benefits on a cellular level. I mean, this is an interesting analogy that I give, but I always ask people, what is a blueberry do in the body? I always ask this all the time because then and people kind of just look at me blankly. It's usually the look that I get. And I was like, well, if you think about a blueberry, it's got polyphenols. It has antioxidants. It's got vitamins. It's got minerals. It's got fiber. And ultimately what happens is your body breaks it down and into these, these finite chemical constituents, these organic chemical constituents. And then your body decides what we're going to do with this today. Where are the phenols going? Where's the antioxidants going? It's all this intelligence. And same thing with that drop of essential oil. Your liver metabolizes it. It goes to the bloodstream, breaks down, and then your body's like, what do we have here? Ooh, what are we going to do? You know, and we get to leverage that chemistry. I don't know if that's, this is how I feel about it. <laughs> oh, honey, honestly. And when you realize that each drop, each of those organic compounds are made up of, of hydrocarbon molecules, and then these can be classified further as terpenes, alcohols, esters, aldehydes, you know, phenols, like you say, when you start to understand what one drop is made up of, and like you said, matching with our own chemistry, that is the profound nature. And you know what I love even more than that is that it is not like a structured drug, over-the-counter drug, which is only ever made up of these certain components. You and I both know that lavender that I've got this year could be very different to the lavender I've bought next year or even from company to company because we get them from different fields. Even that in itself is remarkable and using nature at her best. We are constantly changing and evolving 
as are essential oils. So I'm totally with you on the one drop is so profound, so powerful, so potent, and so incredibly gorgeous to use in your everyday world. 100%. And you're absolutely right about the synthetics. You know, your our bodies, we do not do well with synthetics. We just don't. Your body was never intended for that. Your body is like, oh, uh-uh. And we do one of two things. We try to get rid of it or we store it. It's, those are our options in a nutshell. And that's what's so great is we, we were never designed to isolate these synthetic compounds and create pharmaceuticals like this. We Not to say that there isn't a time and place in some instances for those, but we, we often have to realize that there is there's repercussions to shifting and messing with this chemistry. Whereas when we're using plant-based medicine, we're using we're using what I, you know, what I consider to be this gift from the earth that was always intended to work with our bodies, you know, from, from nutrition to herbs, to essential oils, you know, all of these things are such a great benefit to us. And cause we're leveraging that, that organic material, just like ourselves, that I always felt like it was meant to be like, it, it just, it, it's a no brainer, particularly in the U S I don't know how. We, we've gone down this crazy rabbit hole into these synthetic medications. Goodness knows it is really not serving us. And so I'm so grateful that we get to have these conversations. We get to bring light to the possibility of something different. Yes. And I think really understanding that a lot of those pharmaceutical medications are driven by the dollar, not with the heart, where I consider yourself and, and someone like you who who truly does lead from the heart and lead with her heart, I would love to think that that there are more people like you wanting to do this work. So I cannot be more grateful. Your book has been one of the most beautiful books I have had the power to read. And it's so beautiful to have someone like yourself write the science and also, I guess, the energetic vibration around what these plants can do. So I just want to acknowledge you for the work you do in that field and giving people those options. Oh, thank you. Well, I, the feeling is mutual. The next question I want to ask you, sometimes I steer away from the controversy around essential oils, but I know that you've been addressing the controversy. So have I. You know, I've been I've been interviewed on a podcast where I didn't know the controversy was going to come up and someone would just hit me with a battery of questions. Uh, not that I felt like on the defense, but I was like, oh, I didn't realize it was this kind of conversation. But I know that we have had the opportunity to kind of discuss a little bit of controversy around essential oils. And anytime something becomes a big deal, anytime we see this this massive shift. We know that we're going to butt up against some controversy. So I was just, you know, curious about your take on oils internally and around using them with animals. You know, we know that a lot of vets are beginning to use oils. There's a lot of caution that could needs to be in consideration. I'd love to know based on your expertise, where do you feel philosophically on these two areas? Well, essential oils have been used for thousands of years. Essential oils have been used in a very profound medical way. You only have to speak to doctors in France that still prescribe the internal use of essential oils. I guess where I sit on it is where I believe because an essential oil is not soluble in water, my only recommendation based as an aromatherapist would be that if you're going to use essential oils internally, make sure it's for a short period of time that they're encapsulated for the specific use that you're wanting them for. Let's think about it from this point of view. Essential oils, every single one of them are antiseptic and antibacterial to a lesser or greater degree. They are incredible antiseptic antibacterial molecules. Now, if the gut we know is made up of trillions of bacteria, I would just say use common sense that it's perhaps not necessary to take them in a glass of water every day. I would add a drop of peppermint to a beautiful green smoothie or I make a bulletproof coffee where I love to add a drop of orange to it. When I make recipes, I guess from a, from a safety point of view as an aromatherapist, where I sit is when I speak to the public, I say no more than four drops per recipe. If it's a one-person smoothie, one drop is all it takes. There is so much flavor in one drop. We also Especially have to appreciate Especially peppermint. That. Oh, my goodness. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I know, right? I had one lady say, I put 20 drops of peppermint in my chocolate almond cake and I put 20 drops 
crops. And to me, it's like, come on, remember they are up to a hundred times more concentrated yeah. than the Except plant. That's or a the peppermint cake. I know, right? A, I don't even know if there's know. any. It's a little chocolate and a lot of peppermint. <laughs> It was too much it's and too, too much. much for the system, you know. So my belief is short periods of time internally, encapsulated if it's for medicinal purposes, if you're flavoring or using it as a food flavor, and let's face it, 70% of the aromatherapy or essential oil industry is designed for food flavoring. So when we think about that, to me, it's like have it in a fat so make sure that if you're going to use it in a recipe, there's a fat of some sort so that the oil can be dispersed evenly throughout that and you're not having one big drop or globule hitting the gut in one turn. So that would be my take on it. And also, let's face it, there's a lot of passionate advocates out there who just love essential oils. They've got such a, a beautiful passion to have everybody have them in their lives, but they are potent medicinal extracts so don't let that enthusiasm override necessary scientific and medical information and that would be my only thing err on the side of caution when it comes to internal I'm not against it but if, if there would be one message I could get out there would be less is best and certainly for me from a flavoring point of view have it in some sort of a fat when it comes to animals, again, common sense. I just had an email yesterday from a lady who went, oh, I've just read on the internet, which is the biggest, scariest place to get oh a lot gosh. of information. Especially aromatherapy information. It, it's a lot of fear mongering on the interwebs. But yes, go on. <laughs> I know, right? So she's worried about her two pug dogs. And now she's feeling like she shouldn't be using certain oils in her diffuser. I've had so many people say to me, you know, I'm worried about my dog, my cat. Well, again, I'm not suggesting you put oils directly onto an animal. Let's face it, they are very potent extracts. But to make a beautiful blend with tea tree and lavender and eucalyptus, a very diluted blend, and using that on the back of an animal's neck instead of these chemically, I mean, people worry about essential oils, but have you seen what makes up? you know, how to get rid of fleas on animals. If you understood the chemicals that people willy-nilly put onto their animals and then question the potency of oils, it just, it astounds me. I've had pregnant women ring me and go, I'm really worried about your lavender oil. I'm, I'm 12, you know, 11, 12 weeks pregnant. And then I say to them, do you fill up your car with petrol? And they go, well, yes. And I go, do you ever smell those fumes as you're filling up your car with petrol? And they go, and I honestly, this is no joke. And she goes, oh my gosh, yes, of course. And she goes, oh my gosh, now come to think of it. I was cleaning my bathroom with bleach the other day. And I was wondering if I should be smelling that while I'm pregnant. And I said, therein lies the amazing dichotomy in this where dichotomy in this where we sit there and we go, are you seriously questioning lavender in a diffuser over inhaling bleach or you know petrol fumes? So I guess my message would be come on people, let's use our common sense. Less is best. Animals have very strong sense of smell. Dilute your blends. When you're diffusing oils, make sure you only use the right number of drops in the right room. Have ventilation and allow the animal to come and go. They will make the intelligent decision if it's not for them. But at the same time, do not lather them in essential oils. It's not like we sprinkle straight oils all over our children, our pets, our elderly. If you want to use essential oils, understand the specifics on the methods of use, the numbers of drops, then you can safely apply essential oils for all the things and people that you love. That would be my take on it. I am 100% on your train, on your philosophy. I 100% agree with you on both counts when it comes to internal usage. I think, you know, less is more in those circumstances. We do add a little, a little bit of orange to our, you know, two person green smoothies, but we, you know, we're using avocado and we're using coconut oil and all these other great things that are going there. And so I absolutely agree. Our microbiome is a very delicate nature. We got to be really mindful there. So I really appreciate that. I get so many pet questions all the time and I'm, and I'm always, I have the basic answers, but I'm like, you know, that's really, there's so many wonderful vets out there that are really great at giving the same answers that you just gave as well, but just using caution in that case. 
Absolutely. And common sense. And my other tip just on on that, my love, is also sometimes I find it interesting that people will put oils into food as a flavoring that aren't actually in the food chain. So we don't naturally eat tea tree. However, so I wouldn't put tea tree into a recipe. To me, it's the herb, spice and citrus oils that we use in a food chain. Again, just to to finish on that, I just wanted to make that point as well. Use oils that are naturally in our food chain, not oils that we wouldn't eat normally outside of that. That would be my only other recommendation. Got it. That makes so much sense. Absolutely. That makes sense. I want to just steer a little bit to a topic that I love to talk about that I've had. I'm I'm just kind of diving into, you know, when I was on my big health journey, when I was dealing with my women's hormones and growing up, I'd had, you know, I got to share some of my stories on your episode. I had grown up with this idea that healing was not a fun process, that a lot of health was not a fun process either. It was kind of like the had to do. And when essential oils came into my life, oh my goodness, I just felt like I relished in using them. They made me so happy. I was so excited to do that. They felt like such a luxury, but not a luxury in the sense that they were I can't put a price on the benefit of oils. You know, I don't even think about it. You know, this is a girl who always has rose and jasmine on her at all times. So maybe I'm rolling deep with the sexy oils, right? But talk to me about the luxury of using these beautiful oils, what they can do, how we can enjoy them and how they are truly an enjoyable experience. Because I I can't tell you how important I feel like this message is. I think for me personally, it's about the daily rituals and really embracing them into an element of self-care. If I tell people to go and look after themselves and to take better care of themselves, they go, yeah, 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 and they want to do it. But then they get home and they're like, well, what does that actually look like? And I think essential oils have become the most profound, easiest tool to embrace the art of self-care. And we know that self-care is the fast track pathway into your heart for self-love. So from my perspective, if you want to know what I do on a daily basis and have done since I was 19 years of age, I'm now almost, I'm 51 tomorrow. I Happy have birthday. Thank you, sweetheart. I am absolutely excited to say that from the moment I wake up, there has not been a day that has gone by that I've, I have not embraced the powers of essential oils since I was 19. So for me, getting up when my children were little, they would get to choose the blend to put on in the diffuser. I would use an oil perhaps the minute I sat up to go to the gym and I might put a drop of rosemary on a tissue and place that in my my top just to give me if I'm a little bit tired. Um, If I was able to have a bath, of course, bathing to me is a beautiful self-care ritual, which these days, sadly, many women go, I haven't got time for that. Well, I'm suggesting if we do not make time for these little micro moments of self-care, then I do believe we'll have to make time to invest into sickness and looking after ourselves later. If we can do these little everyday self-care rituals, I promise, I can almost guarantee that your health and level of health will be raised to match that level of care you see the body talks to us when you are if you accidentally fall over or hurt yourself there's no accident if you believe in the quantum physics of this it's your body's way of saying I need you to take care or if you get a cold or a flu your vibrational frequency drops because the body is trying to say to you hey hey listen to me I need a little bit of loving here but we then go oh gosh I haven't got time for this take an over-the-counter medication we then try and get back into the world because the world is so fast paced. I'm suggesting that when the body talks to you, say, hey, I hear you. I'm going to body boost today with the really beautiful antiseptic first aid oils. And body boosting to me is a ritual I have never missed from the age of 19 every morning. It is into about six mils, a teaspoon of carrier oil, And then I add three drops of my chosen essential oil or chosen essential oil blend. I add four sprays of magnesium health spray. Uh, Just because I'm an athlete, I'm getting older and it's involved in so many different functions and cell communication in the body. And then I 
I boost my body from toe to head. I do this brisk movement. I'm doing it as I'm, I'm I feel like I'm doing it because I'm talking to you. But I work up each leg and here's the key. I thank my legs for the things that they do for me. I honor my tummy for housing two beautiful babies and those scar tissue are stripes of honor. I honor my breasts, even though they now hang lower than they did when I was in my 20s. They fed two babies. I honor my arms, my chest, my heart, where my, my beautiful chest houses my heart. I honor it for the love that it gives. I massage up each arm for the fact that I can hug those I love. And then I finish off over my back and shoulders and arms as far as I can reach, giving myself a hug. And then I scoop out the rest of that bowl and hand, hold my hands on my face. And every morning and night that I do this ritual, I will say something like, I'm a great mum. I'm a beautiful businesswoman. I'm a powerful speaker. I'm a, I'm a hot lover. I don't know. I'll say something that is my rule to myself that I must say something beautiful to myself to honor my body. And on the days where life sucks, and let's face it, Maritza, there are days where I'm sure you've had bathroom floor moments or where we've been, the wind has been knocked out of us or we've had tragic news or we're facing struggle and challenge. Then on those days, I don't say stand there and say something nice because that is truly probably the most inauthentic thing you could do. But I do not stand there and say life sucks. What I have learned, especially in my latest book, is writing that struggle is also a profound opportunity for open-heartedness and learning. In those moments, I will say, God, please give me the courage, grace, strength, and dignity to get through this day. And that's when I take a deep breath and I honor myself, my body, my heart, my soul, and my spirit to then walk out the door and hopefully give it my best, even if I'm struggling. I carry a spritzer with me. I'm always spritzing. I have that in the car and in my handbag. My children each still to this day, even though they're 21 and 19, have a spritzer beside their bed and they still to this day get a goodnight kiss from their mother and a spritz over their head as I say goodnight. I use them in the bath. I have had my husband at the other end of the bath where I have picked up his foot and to get my own massage, because let's face it, they get thumbinitis very quickly. I will massage his foot and show him how it would feel on my foot while we're bathing in beautiful oils. I will also use them in my diffuser daily. I don't believe in this intermittent diffusing conversation that's going on out there. I believe like in nature, smell happens all the time and we get wasps. So having open space, ventilation and using my oils every day. Amen to that. I just want to take a moment and just say our diffusers run practically 24-7. Girl, I, I agree with you 100%. Keep on going. But I just wanted to just, just <laughs> say how I feel about that too. And I've done the research. I feel very confident with that. Well, it's thanks to your research, I advocate this even more. So thank you for that because I am so big on what would nature do. Nature does not switch off the smell of jasmine every 15 minutes. <laughs> Goodness, we have jasmine in our in our backyard right now and it is in full bloom. And even when I walk outside, like not in the backyard, but in the front yard, because we walk our little, we have a little hill and I can smell about 30 to 50 feet away from that jasmine, I can smell it every time I walk by my home. And I just slathered myself in jasmine oil just now. So. <laughs> me too, me too. And jasmine and rose and neroli are my top shelf perfumes, a drop of those. And I don't know about you, but that's another way that I use the oils, particularly those three. And I love sandalwood, frankincense, any of those, but particularly rose for me has been my most favorite as my perfume. Half a drop out of that bottle we know how highly priced it is but we also know that it is incredibly strong it's a base note it is very high vibrational frequency less is definitely more when it comes to rose oil and so I will use that as a perfume and I can tell you this if you put on a drop of rose oil and I put on a drop of rose oil here's the beautiful magic of the science and biochemistry your biochemistry will be you know resonating differently to mind and in fact someone could say to the two of us oh what are your different perfumes you're wearing that is the magic of organic compounds and not using synthetic perfumes that have you know up to 600 chemicals per spray why would we not 
when perfumes are based on the aromas of plants, why would we not go for the plant herself? So that's just a little small way of compressing. I use compress for first aid. I use compress for skin care. I love the power of a compress. And I think we talked about that a lot on your interview with us on Up for a Chat, where I would love people to hear your conversation. It was such a beautiful conversation. And I really believe in the power of using the oils in different ways. You know, Maritza, I had a, an iridologist, naturopath, do a consult with me just recently. And this was a profound discovery for me that I want to share with you and your listeners, that he turned around to me and he read, he could see in my eyes, he said, I can see there's some spikes and there's some problems of stress you've had. He picked up on my lower back, which I did have lower back surgery two years ago, and he picked that up that he said, I've never seen eyes I've never looked at them. And by the way, he did his thesis on, on how to prove that iridology was not a form of medicine, only to be convinced by the end of it that it was one of the most powerful tools for diagnosis. But anyway, he sat there and he said, your eyes, you must do something. There, there's something profound. You get over illness and, and issues personally, emotionally very quickly. And it was in that moment I thought, you know what? I reckon it has been the daily use of essential oils since the age of 19 that has actually been my X factor. I would love to say to your listeners, do not be afraid to use essential oils. Use them correctly. Use them carefully. But my goodness, embrace them holistically into every aspect of your life. And you too will raise your own vibrational frequency to match the power of that. We know that rose, for instance, resonates at around 320 megahertz. When we ourselves resonate between 62 and 70 megahertz, you can imagine when we use something so profound and the only thing that has been known to resonate higher than that is love. Well, rose is the oil for love. It is the oil for romance. It is TLC. It is self-care. It is the most beautiful oil for grief, resentment, anger, fear. She is also the most profound oil to use in skincare and anti-aging. Hormonal conditions, she is my go-to with puberty, pregnancy, menopause, birth, all of those transitional elements of a woman's life, I would not be out without rose oil. Oh my gosh, I feel like I just got on a big pedestal there and I, I just couldn't stop talking. I loved it. Oh my <laughs> goodness. You know, I just want to reverbitate, what, like reverb what you just said about the power of daily usage and that being your X factor. You know, when we are consistently doing the self-care, when we're consistent, I think of, and we talked about this on your episode, I talked about how I, I feel, I believe that essential oils are the super highway. They're the fast track to creating these beautiful self-care rituals that we so, we desperately deserve. We deserve those rituals every single day, but that they're such big needle movers in that, not only in what they can help us with, with the self-care piece, but also what they're just doing inherently and intelligently in the body whether you like it or not, they are doing all this great work. And whether you know what's happening or not, it's such a complex orchestra of what's going on when we're using oils every day. And there's so many side benefits to what they're doing that we don't even recognize. When you look at just peppermint oil, you know, the one drop of peppermint oil, you think about the hundreds of things that peppermint oil can do inside of the body, including helping to boost oxygen to the brain, helping to boost mitochondrial functions that we have more energy and we feel less foggy. Like that's just one tiny little example. But by breathing that oil in, it is doing all kinds of other things too at the same time. And so I just, I'm, I'm about to get on my little tangent too. <laughs> Do you I, know, we just interviewed Dr. Jack Cruz and he believes 95% of all illness is based on the mitochondria. So you just saying that around peppermint oil, you know what? Use these oils. They are the most profound medicine and drops of love you will ever embrace into your daily life. I agree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to showcase a couple of things. We are talking about self-care and, you know, I have been privileged to get my hands on your book, which, oh my goodness, talk a little bit about, I know we've been speaking to self-care, but you have written this gorgeous beautiful book on the art of self-care, weaving in essential oils, weaving in so much 
of what I believe to be true for healthcare for women in particular, for women and families. But you know, I love to focus on the ladies. And I feel like when we as women shift the way that we take care of our health, we lead this legacy for our families, right? It so often starts with us. And then just like listening to your daughter ask for ginger and peppermint, what a legacy you have left for her. Yeah, and you know what's so beautiful? She's she's flying out to Paris tonight to audition in a dance. She's a ballerina and she's off to audition tonight. She has her little first aid oils. She has her jasmine. She has her beautiful homeopathics. She's got her little kit. And you're right, it's just hit me that it's her upbringing that has created that power to care for herself, which in turn means she values herself enough to love herself. And it was having my then 16-year-old son sit on the end of my bed three years ago that he was broken and he was distraught. And I'm sure many mums will appreciate that a mother is only as happy as her saddest child. And I watched him at break point. Three years leading up to that, there's no accident. I have been researching how people get through tough times. What do we do to get up, out, over, and through challenges in life? And I'm yet to meet anybody who has not had one. Therefore, it is part of the human experience. The problem is it can break so many people instead of help make them. And I know when we're in the throes of despair and challenge, the last thing you want to hear is that this is a gift. But we do know in hindsight when we get through it and we look back, we can see it made a profound impact on where we are and who we are today. In fact, it's often at break point we find our greatest strengths, which is something I learned through the power of ultramarathon running. So when he sat there, I drew him a love heart on the page and then I wove him through the six steps that I believe take us back to self-love, that it's okay to fall out of love or to be in fear or feel grief or even self-sabotage ourselves. So long as we have the awareness that that's what we're doing, we're already back into what I call the circle of self-love. So this book was born because when I showed it to him, he then turned around and said, Mom, I've never heard it explained like this. You've got to get this out there. And that is why I wrote The Art of Self-Love, weaving in the oils for things like grief or despair or anger or fear. I wrote them all in there, what oils I would use in those situations, and then what self-care rituals to embrace for that that leads you back on that pathway of self-awareness, self-care, self-discipline, self-control, self-respect, and then the all-elusive self-acceptance. That is why I wrote the book, Thank to figuring that if a 16-year-old boy got it, then surely the world would get it too. So I'm proud to say that, yes, whilst he did get kicked out of school, he finished school. He's now on his mission to be a, a top rugby player, a beautiful heart. I'm very proud of both my children and how they use the oils. My, my own stories are throughout that book where my marriage was nearly over, you know, eight, nine years ago. I launched my business just as a whole financial institution collapsed here in Australia. I needed $40,000. I couldn't find it. And I thought maybe that's the universe saying give up. But my girlfriend turned around to me and said, or oh, maybe it's the universe asking how bad do you want it? So I share very openly, very rawly my personal stories and how I believe essential oils were the pathway back to me, believing in me every time I've been knocked off my feet or had the wind taken out of me. I've experienced many hardships from sexual abuse as a young woman right the way through, or a little girl actually, right the way through to things like my marriage, losing our money and losing my grandmother, thinking of closing the doors on my business twice, you know, so many things. My story is no different to anyone else's, but I'm hoping through sharing my story and, and sharing women like you, Maritza, that people do get to see that we're not people that just, you know, it's all good and a bed of roses and a a beautiful waft of jasmine. It's not. <laughs> Life is tough some days and we too are challenged. And I hope by being completely honest, open and very uh, transparent that people too will find a way back to self-love. Thank you so much for not only sharing the inspiration and the story around this book, but also being so transparent and authentic 
with with me and with the listeners today. You know, I hope that today's episode inspires so many of you, so many of you that have been on the fence still, have seen the Instagram posts, who've seen your best friend use an oil at a cafe with you, that it's time to jump on in. Now, Kim, honey, where can we find you? Where are the best places for us to plug in and get to know you better? Because if anyone's like me, they're going to want to know you better. (laughs) My Instagram, I love Instagram. So Kim Morrison and then the number 28. I have a website, kimmorrison.com and also my own beautiful business, which is the word 20 and the number 8.com. You can follow me on all of those social media handles. I'm on LinkedIn. I just, yeah, I'm very honored and proud to be a part of your world and and just want to say thank you. And I I can't wait to hang out with you all more too. Yes, absolutely. And then just one more thing. Tell us the name of your beautiful podcast. Oh, Up For A Chat. It's just called Up For A Chat, hosted by Cindy O'Meara, Karen Smith, and myself, Kim Morrison. We've been going six years. Beautiful Maritza, I think, is episode number 323 from memory. Just go and listen to that. I was so excited. You, I've had a major girl crush on you for some time. So to have you on our show was a huge privilege, and it's an honor for me to be here, beautiful. Mm, thank you so much. Well, Kim, honey, it was such a pleasure to get to share your brilliance today to get to understand you know how deeply embedded these oils have played a role in your life and i'm so grateful that you're out there sharing that message in such a big way so thank you so much again thank you sweetheart now from the moment i met kim i knew she was extraordinary and had something amazing to share with you her journey has helped her to support thousands upon thousands of people with essential oils and her message of self-love, which I think we could all use a little bit of every now and again. Now, I simply could not wait to share her intimate knowledge of oils along with her understanding of the chemistry and the vibrational frequency of oils. I hope you enjoyed this interview with her as much as I did. Now, if you want to check out Kim and her new book, The Essential Art of Self-Love, I will have the link in the show notes for episode 90. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming on in, for stopping by and listening to the Essentially You podcast. In this next episode coming up, I am bringing up another bright light, Liz Moody. And we're talking about health food trends, why getting healthier together is the way to go, and incredibly effective ways to manage anxiety. So you're not gonna wanna miss this incredible, candid conversation that I have with Liz. Now, as I mentioned earlier on the show, it is always my goal to spread the word about the Essentially You podcast and shout out your wins. So just take a moment, share this episode with somebody, plug them into the podcast, or even rate and review the Essentially You podcast on iTunes. That way, we can not only continue to serve you, but serve other amazing women who are ready to become healers in their own home. Until then, have an incredible day.